Pukachu, Pukachu. It's like being in the jungle here, Fran. Well, spring is coming. Don Moult, Might be here. Yes. Plantation. Yes. Fran is here. I'm out of the jungle now. And this is just to show us that we can have a jungle even if we don't have a big backyard. Exactly. What are we going to do? Small containers, big containers? <clears throat> All kinds of containers. Load me up. My goal here is just to, to share that even if you don't have a big place in the ground to plant a garden, you can have a garden. Uh, I like the idea of putting a pot inside of a pot, or is this just the only place you can put it? This is just to bring it up so you could see it. But oh, you okay. could put a pot in there. Okay, so what's going on with this? Well, I just wanted to show different kinds of containers. There are unglazed containers like this big one that breathes really well. You don't have to water so much. There are plastic containers like this one that tend to heat up a little bit in the hot summer days. You probably water less. You could do recycled metal containers. I have a question. Yes. Okay, I got a, a metal container like that okay. or I got a nice ceramic pot like this. What if it doesn't have a hole in the bottom you of it? You have to make holes in the bottom of it. You get a hammer and a nail and you make holes in the bottom of it. Can you see that? Look at it. It has to drain. You there can't you let the water collect in there. It has to drain. Some nice pot. Isn't that a great pot? Oh, there I think you go. it's I love the recycled pots. Okay, so if I have a ceramic one, I can't get a hole in it. What do I do with that? Then you have to get a drill. And you have to drill it. You have to get a drill. Yeah, because I've rotted some roots out of some plants like you that. You can't do it. Even if you put something in the bottom. Gravel. Gravel is not good to put in the bottom. How do you know how often to water something like this? You wait until the you stick your finger down in when the top couple inches are dry, mm -hmm. you water. Okay. This one's just fabulous. So it's, and it's a matter of whether they're sitting in the sun or the shade, how exactly. fast they dry out. And you huh? want to match the plant that you have to the sun or shade. Mm -hmm. You could do flowers. You could do herbs, like here. So this could be a whole little herb garden right in that old Can this be roaster. part shade then, herbs? Herbs can be part shade, but they do better in full sun, they at like least sun. six hours a day. Okay, what if I, what if I get a, a deck and in the shade in the morning and the sun in the afternoon? I would do this garden here would be perfect. This is specifically for a deck. You see it fits over a railing. Oh yeah, look at that. So That's good. if all you have is a deck railing, this is a little salad garden. This, these are lettuces and this is le actually lemongrass. If you take a piece and... Oh yeah, let's try that. Don't, don't, don't eat know it? I don't if I taste it. You can cook with it. It's wonderful. Okay. So you could do an herb garden in partial shade. You could do a salad garden in partial shade. Lettuces would be fabulous. Okay, what's going on with this bag here? This is, we have uh, ceramic, we have metal, we have plastic. This is a cloth bag. And you could plant a whole, uh, you could plant a whole tomato plant in here and a pepper plant. And what, you carry it around the yard or it what? It sits wherever you yeah. put it. It's going to be pretty heavy when you fill it. Okay. And then this one is huge. You can actually plant a whole small garden in this one. These are called... Um, yeah. Bag gardens, smart pots is what they are. I've never seen this before. Is this a new thing? This is kind of new. The last few years it's been out. And it lasts for many years. It drains. You don't have to put holes in the bottom. Uh, it root prunes. The roots don't grow out of it. I so like it. So that's the pots. And soil for a container garden should mm -hmm. be very light and high nutrients. This like, is one example. That's called happy frog. So, you, how, so it should have like a lot of vermiculite a in it? A lot of vermiculite, perlite, probably peat. Uh -huh. And fertilizing a container garden, you should fertilize about once every 10 days. Sometimes, one time I fertilized something and I put too much in it. How do you know not to put too much and burn it and ruin it? Well, I would follow package directions very carefully. I have to learn how to read then. You have to learn how to read. And, okay. I, <laughs> and I would get one specifically. I wouldn't get anything like a 12-12-12. I would get a nice, mm -hmm. balanced fertilizer. Right. Um, you like dry better than liquid? I use either one. You use either one? Yeah. Hey, what about these new gardens I see where people are growing things right on the wall? It's vertically. Like, vertically. Vertically. How, how do you do that? Is that with a bag or something? How do you do there, it? I have seen them where someone took um, a gutter. Oh. And they mounted a row of gutters and so they had salad greens. Oh. But the, the only concern with those is the root area is very small. So you can't really grow usually big plants. You could grow okay. lettuce gardens like this would do really well. Okay. The, another thing to be aware of is if you're going to put a tomato in a container this size, like yeah. this big pot, right. I would look for a determinate tomato instead of an indeterminate tomato. Does Remember it say that on, yeah. that? So does it say it on the plant? On it the should thing? say it on the label. It should be indeterminate gets huge. Well, if I go to Don Moles Plantation, I you can help me with that, right? Determine it. Yes. Okay. Somebody go there see, can go help. see Fran. They'll check it out. Yep. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good time to see you in the spring, right? I think so. Yes. Yahoo. Okay. Still to come on New